as a woman, I have uh, renounced debating men, but I would like to have a conversation with you, if you would be so kind. And I wanted to ask you how you feel about Easter having been raised fundamentalist Christian. Because I was raised Catholic, I am Catholic, and um, I understand your criticisms of fundamental Christianity because you feel like you're never allowed to ask questions. But I just wanted to, you know, I wonder what your thoughts were as a on it as a Christian holiday, how you feel about it. Like in general, I mean, yeah, it, it like it is what it is. I don't really have many thoughts on it. Um, I, I have a lot of thoughts on the conservative reaction to the Biden thing with Trans Visibility Day. I think that's pretty silly. The conservative outrage about that. Um, well, but you said earlier, you said a few minutes ago, like you're very mad at Christians. Is that just fundamental Christians or all Christians? Okay, so what I was saying so you, earlier... You have a lot of is, anger towards Christianity. Yes, what I was saying earlier is that I have... I wasn't allowed to ask questions really growing up because I was brainwashed into being a Christian since pretty much since the day I was born. Um, so that's what I was talking about. I, I wasn't saying that, like, that's why I don't like Christians or something like that. Uh, I was saying, though, that I am very angry at christianity as a whole partially due to my personal experience of being so heavily controlled as a child because of a religion if that makes mm. sense okay yeah that makes sense but are you mad at like like christianity is like it's a bunch of things right so like you have catholicism then you have the split off of that which is orthodox christianity and then you have a bunch of protestant sects one of which is fundamentalism but are you mad at all of Christianity or just the sect that you were raised in? Because I can see why you'd be mad at that. A lot, like, it's a, it's an atheist factory fundamentalism. I, sure. I mean, I'm not, like, mad at Christians. Like, if I'm driving and I see somebody, you know, with, like, a Christian bumper sticker or something, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm mad at them. It's not like that. It's more like I think that all Christians are wrong. I think that they all believe something that is, like, foundationally and fundamentally flawed. Um regardless of denomination so that's really why? what it comes down to why do you believe that well, well i mean where do you want to start the the you, well okay let me ask you a question okay let me ask you a question do you believe that the christian story is a good story even if you think it's a fairy tale or whatever that it's a good fairy tale um i think that I can see how in some ways it can be a good story, but I also think that it's kind of weird and fucked up if you actually step away from the long-standing tradition of that story and think about, like, someone sacrificing their son. Why? That's the first thing, is, is where the story starts to break down is, why? Why does God need to sacrifice his son? It's to provide a bridge so that we can be around God, right? Be around, in God's presence despite our sin well i would say like it's like it's the ultimate form of love right I, I understand if you don't believe it or whatever but it's sort of like the ultimate way of god showing his love how could you show love for somebody more than to sacrifice your own son but god did that because them? of the rules that he made correct yeah so it was to it was to teach i think i think this i think the way it works i'm not an expert my dad is the one with a theology degree but I, to me the way that works is that God gave us the rules. He gave the Jews the rules. And they couldn't follow it. But they were like, okay, we're going to follow it. And they fucked it up super bad. And then he was like, okay, here's my son. And he's going to tell you, like, don't worry about the rules. Just listen to me. And because humans are bad, it's, it's not an anti-Semitic thing. Like, humans are bad. We have original sin. We crucified the Son of God instead of, like, accepting that, you know, his teachings and has his love. And so... Jesus died to save us from ourselves. Like, we can't follow the rules. The rules make sense, but, but we can't God follow made them the... because of original sin. Okay, right. Yeah. But God, so God made the rules, right? Mm-hmm. And God made the rules in yeah. such a way that he knew it would be impossible for humans to live up to those rules. Right? I mean, that's like a tricky thing about free will. Like, you can... You can follow the rules, I think, but, like, we are fallen. But we did have free will originally, and we chose to do wrong. So right. he so, did give with, us free will. We're not, like— So considering the fact that God gave us free will thoughts. and knowing that He God gave us free will, God also then made the rules that 
would obviously conflict with our free will. Another thing he gave us. So God is the one that set up no, the entire obviously. dichotomy, though. So God set up the dichotomy. God said, here's the rules. He arbitrarily made the rules. Then he arbitrarily decided the consequences for breaking the rules. And then he is supposed to be worshipped because he saved us from the result of us not following him. Do you see the, the circular issue there? Well, I like to think of it like a family, right? So, like, <clears throat> if, if you give your kid rules, you could say, like, you arbitrarily set the rules. But the rules are good for the kid. But the kid has free will, and the kid can not follow your rules. But if the kid is really sorry, the kid will say, like, okay, I was wrong. And if, you know, you need your parents' forgiveness to kind of say, like, okay, I understand. You made the wrong decision. And, I don't know, it... You don't have to believe in it, but wouldn't you say that's hopeful? Because we all know that we suck. Like, people suck. I suck. No, I do shitty things all the time. No, I think that that's time. part of the a major issue. Like, what you're saying right now is part of what was taught to me growing up, and it's part of the reason why, like, to this day I struggle with, like, self-esteem issues and mental health problems and whatnot. Because teaching people that they are intrinsically flawed is a, a super messed up thing to teach anybody. It's proven to do psychological harm. And I actually don't think that's true. I think that with proper guidance, with proper rules and discipline, people are amazing. People can cooperate and work together and do great things. I mean, that's how people became where we are, right? That's why human beings are at the top of the food chain, at the top of everything else, right? It's because we know how to cooperate. We know how to work together and show empathy. I, I, I don't think we're intrinsically flawed. Like, humans, it, whatever, made in the image of God, and we're all, like, but we you said are original all his sin. creation. We're all an expression of his love. Yes, because we all, we since he gave us free will, right? He didn't just make us robots who do the right thing. He gave us free will, mm -hmm. and we're inclined to choose bad. Like, you'd have to admit that, right? Like, even with babies, like... They hit each other, or like little kids, like they kick each other, they hit each other, they're selfish, Not they're actually. mean to other there's, kids there's, a lot of the time. There's more recent data now that suggests that selfishness is something that's taught and not something that's like an innate, intrinsic thing. Because if you look at children in certain contexts, they're very generous. They're so willing to share. I have kids, and I can tell you that's that true. it's definitely that's true. true that sometimes they're they're selfish, uh, for sure. But there's also times where I see my kids show just immense generosity when I'm not even around. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, 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 guess, I guess my question to you is, like, don't you think it's appealing? I'm not saying you have to believe it, but it's appealing to think that there's, like, a loving father out there who embrace. I'm sorry about that. Who, like, embraces us even like within all of our pain and suffering who's like gonna be there for us even no, if you think it's a because... fantasy wouldn't don't you think it's appealing no because the the loving father is also the one who is is saying that we are all intrinsically flawed not that i don't think it's that we're intrinsically flawed but we have a tendency to choose I thought evil that we're like all a lot of people are we not all fallen like without christ yes. we're fallen Right? Like fallen. our yes. human nature mm. is a fallen nature. That's like what the Bible says, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the song Amazing Grace yeah. is, is how could uh, Amazing Grace save a wretch like me? Yeah, yeah. Right, so it's well, all I mean, about that. Reality, so, so how like, is this loving but, God but, but, who made us in his image simultaneously saying you are intrinsically, innately, your nature is a fallen one? I don't know, like, don't you, don't you think reality at its core is all about having relationships? How what is, sorry? Say that again? Reality is kind of all about having relationships. Like, we have a relationship with everything around us, with other people. Like, relationships are the most important thing. Okay. So how could that not be true of reality as a whole? Like, we also have a relationship with, like, you know, like, God is truth, beauty, and goodness. Like... He, because God is not those things. Too. God is not truth, beauty, and goodness. God commanded his people to do a lot of things that were not any were anything but goodness. God himself did things that were not goodness. And this is where, where 
Christianity it all breaks down. This is why I know it seems like I'm sort of like jumping all over the place. But the reason why is because in my mind, there are so many problems with it. That's like anything can just be a segue into another flaw in my mind. So like if you want to talk about God being truth and goodness and everything else, God is also said to be justice. And God did not do just things. God himself is not just. He judges people based on their belief, whether or not they believe in Christ, whether or not they've accepted Jesus Christ or whatnot. That's what's going to determine whether or not someone gets into heaven or hell, not their actions. And that's not justice. No, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Really? Where is that not true? I mean, if that was true, then like all the Native Amer all the Native Americans would go to hell because they didn't they didn't even know Christ was. It, that's no. That's I, I think the Bible actually does say that like ignorance that would there, uh, a just God. There's something. To well, do I with mean, ignorance, it, right? Like from the Catholic point of view, there's in, invincible ignorance means like you just don't know or whatever. And of course, that you wouldn't like a just God wouldn't send you to hell if you just. We don't Catholics don't believe that God judges that way. Right, but do Catholics because that wouldn't in make any sense. Like it doesn't make any sense. So do Catholics believe in evangelizing? Um, yes, but yes, but Pope Francis, um, he's not very into evangelization, especially proselytization. I think, which is like within religions, trying to like convert people. It's more about like showing people that you're happy, and then if they're interested, they can say like, "Well, what do you believe in?" And you can right, be like, but if oh, it, you I'm know, saying I, that if the I Catholic believe, believe but like going around and saying like. Do you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior like that? It's it's cringe. Nobody like it. Why? Why would you have to sell God? I, that sucks. Well, the evangelizing thing is is the Bible talks about people being called to evangelize. But if you're saying there's such a thing as as uh, invincible ignorance, then there's another contradiction, which is it would actually kind of be immoral to spread the gospel then. Because ignorance would give those people a shield, a protection from ever going to hell. Now they've been presented with the, the dichotomy. However, I am pivoting too far right now, so I, I'm fine going back to that. But if I could go back to the justice thing, because mm. God, it, it absolutely does say that. The Roman says, um, what does it say? Uh, Profess with your mouth that Jesus is risen and believe in your heart that God uh, or that Jesus is Lord or something of this nature. And you will be saved. It's through faith that we are saved. 